Well, it's August here in Wisconsin. We're starting to get excited for whitetail season. So with that coming up, I recently got into saddle hunting last fall. Put a lot of time in these things. And I just wanted to come on here and talk about it and kind of bring into the side of saddle hunting and being mobile and how important I think that is in hunting whitetails on public land. So this is the pack that I ended up getting. The, the backpack itself is a first light transfer pack. They came out with it last year and it just worked best for me because it had a bunch of adjustability for being able to strap stuff on. So I got my Skeletor sticks on here. I have my platform, but usually if I'm in self-filming, I'll have my camera arm with me and it, it just, it makes it way easier when you get to the tree, being able to unpack everything and just throw it on the tree quick. The, the less time you can have messing around at the bottom of the tree or up in the tree trying to get everything situated, the better off you're gonna be. So this is the pack that I'm running. It works out really nice. So this is pretty much how I come to the tree almost every single time I show up in the woods. Is And if I don't have a tree picked out from previous scouting, most saddle hunters, they say a basketball sized tree, but honestly, it's it kind of depends on what area you're hunting. If you're in big timber, if you're in marshes, some of the marshes you're only running trees that are you know 10 inches round and depending on how many people if like if I have a camera guy with me or something like that then you're gonna be looking for a bigger tree but roughly I try to get around basketball size and it's easier too just for reaching around the tree having foot straps on and everything how I packed it I just do it in the complete opposite so I'll take my sticks off first and I'll run the sticks up and the nice part about having a saddle is you have your lineman's rope so as you're climbing up the tree I'll take my lineman's rope running around the tree and I'll actually be able to have both hands free for when I'm hanging sticks as I'm climbing which one it's safer so I'm not falling out of the tree and then it's just way easier to be able to do it with two hands so just for video purposes I'm not gonna scale up the whole tree as I'm climbing just to make it easier so I don't have to get up and down the tree a hundred times I have these gear ties on the side of my saddles and I'll wrap my climbing sticks in each one because the first one I can get from the ground and the second one I usually just reach as tall as I can and I can usually get that one from the ground as well. So then the next two I have gear tied onto my saddle and then on the back I have a 3D printed little hook for the tethered platform. So I hook that platform on and then I got both my hands free. When I get to the point of being able to hang the platform, I'm usually standing on the bottom step of the top stick. While I'm standing on the bottom step is around chest height. So it makes it really easy for me to just be right here with the platform. But for the video's sake, I'm gonna just put the platform on real quick and I'll just do the saddle run through as I would be if I was climbing the tree, just right from the ground. So what works best for me is I'll usually set the platform up and I'll lean against it and hold the platform to the tree with my chest so I got both hands free and I'm able to reach the strap around and I'll cinch it somewhat tight but still be able to move the platform around and then that's when I'll adjust my platform to exactly where I want it. So if I, I want it offset to one side or the other, I can do that. And then once she's cinched tight, I'll pull down on the platform a little and then that's when you can unfold the platform and then as you push the platform down, it'll tighten the strap down. So it's just pulling out. Money. And then with the tethered platform, they have a, a, an adjustable bolt so you can control what angle you have your platform on. So if you're in a tree that's real crooked or something like that, you can adjust it just to make it easier on your ankle so you're not bending your feet like crazy getting uncomfortable. The easiest way for me to haul all my gear is Tethered has these sis haulers and they're pretty much just big pouches that hang off the sides of your saddle. And I pack them in the reverse order that I'm gonna use them when I get in the tree. So first I'm gonna take my lineman's rope out, wrap that around the tree before I even start climbing, hook that up, run my sticks up. Once I get my platform up, I'll keep my lineman's rope attached to my saddle climb up onto the platform. So now that I'm up on the platform, just off to my right hand side, I got another sis hauler. I try to put it roughly at nose level around the tree. So with my lineman rope still hooked up, 
I'll reach around the tree. And I'll hook my tethered up. Now with my, my tethered strapped around the tree, I'll run my carabiner down to roughly belly button height. And I'll take my bridge out, pull my bridge out a little ways, and I'll attach my lineman's rope to the bridge. And the carabiners that they send you have a little safety lock on them so they can't open if you were to get your lineman's rope tangled or something like that. They don't just open and then you fall out of the tree. Once my tether is attached to my bridge, I'll tighten my tether up so I can adjust the weight onto my tether and take it off my lineman's. And then I can take my lineman's rope off sit back in the saddle, and then I just put my lineman's rope right back in that sis hauler right off my left hand side. On public lands, you can't use screw in bow hangers. So they have a hiss strap that they came up with, and it's almost like a daisy chain, and there's just loops going all the way around on the whole strap. Because the way that I pack my sis haulers, it's gonna be the next thing that I pull out of my sis hauler on my right hand side. So after I'm hanging and I'm set up, I'll take my hiss strap and I'll run that around the tree. I'm going to run it below because there's a branch and I don't want it too high to where it's uncomfortable to grab things. So I'll just run it around the tree quick. And then there's a loop at the end that you just put the other end through and then they give you these simple hooks that you can just hook on to one of the loops and then you just tighten it down. And now that thing's not going anywhere and you got all these all these little loops that you can hook up carabiners to you can put bow hangers on and that's usually what I'll do is I have a carabiner kit that I'll hook up to these and one has a bow hanger and then I got three other carabiners that I usually hang my quiver from and then another one you can hang you know, sometimes I'll put a GoPro on there or I'll hang a portable charger or you can hang. If I'm hunting with two guys and we're just using a free floating camera instead of on a camera arm, I'll actually hang the other camera on there so whoever's hunting with me doesn't have to hold on to the camera the whole time. Super accessible. I'll usually just hang my bowl right off my left side because I'm a right-handed shooter and then I'll have whatever else I need. If, if you got a grunt tube, you can hang that up. And then the access here that runs down the side of the tree. If there's not a branch for me to hook up my backpack to, I'll run a carabiner through the top of my backpack and I'll just hook it right here and hang it so it's just out of my way. So after hunting in this thing a decent amount last fall, I seen a bunch of different ways to move the access of your tether out of the way. And what ended up working best for me is I actually put it around the carabiner and I just made a little knot with it. I didn't cinch it tight or nothing, but I just made a little knot so it just stays out of the way. And you still have plenty of adjustability if you want to move up, if you want to go back down and hang a little more. It's still super easy. It's not in the way. And then you don't have to worry about getting the access tangled up on either your saddle or if you're bringing your bowl around. The last part that I have is 100% an option and it's just more of a comfort level and it helps greatly in all day sits I believe and it's just they have a, a recliner they call it and it's just a big just a big strap that goes around your lower back and you can adjust it some people actually put it they move it all the way down and they put it on their legs if they want to just kind of act like they're sitting in a chair for a while but I like it best on my back so all you do is you just take it put it up put it up over your head adjust it where you roughly want it on your back then you just strap it right in to that carabiner and they got these little bungees that you just put around your saddle and then they just strap in right here just so it kind of keeps it in place so it's not just swinging around doing whatever it's like and it's got adjustability on it depending on how much pressure you want to take off and now with that if I was in a hunting situation, I'd have my bow hanging on my left side. I'd have my release on, camera hanging, whatever else you need, grunt tube. Sometimes I'll have rattling antlers up there. And then obviously if I'm self-filming, I'll have a camera arm 
off the right side. But now all I get to do is I get to sit here, hang, and I'm hunting. Me personally, I've hunted out of tree stands for years. And ever since I started really diving into public land, carrying those tree stands was just a pain. They got caught on a lot of branches. They're loud, they're heavy. And now tree stands are getting a lot lighter. You got a lot of different types of tree stands. And I'm not against them. I just personally, I like the saddle and it's the best for me. And tethered was something that I ended up talking to him at an expo and great guys, super great customer service. They helped me out a lot, even responding off of Instagram with questions that I had. And I decided to bite the bullet, tried it, and it was the best decision I made. It made it way easier just getting out into the woods and being mobile. And that was one thing that really changed with me last fall was being able to, to haul it around the woods and not feel so constricted from a heavy stand or worrying about branches getting hung up. And I was able to roughly go into a lot of other trees that I wouldn't have been able to go into if I had a stand. So one of the nice things about being in a saddle that was a huge advantage for me was the adjustability of your angle of being able to shoot at. So for me, a lot of the times in a stand is I would have a deer come in and I would have you know, a, a branch in a way that I had to duck under. So I had to come up with a way to either like, kneel down and shoot off of the tree stand or if I was trying to lean against it, sometimes I would like hook my leg around the seat of the tree stand and lean away from it and it just got to a point where you just couldn't get a good anchor point having your hook around the, the seat of the tree stand and don't get me wrong I've killed a lot of deer out of a tree stand and I've had great shots on them but it's just having more options with the saddle is what I like the best about it and for instance what we were just talking about is you know if a deer came in on my left hand side which is my strong side that if it got behind a tree and it, let's just say it was it was milling around, didn't know I was here, just feeding on some acorns or whatever it was doing, but it wasn't budging from that side of the tree, and that was my sh uh, my shooting lane, is with this ascender, I can have my bow in one hand, I can just take a little bit of weight off my tether, pull my ascender down, and now I can just lean back into it again, and now I can try to shoot around that tree but I can still be anchored with my with my lumbar support and the saddle. I could almost push myself all the way to the edge of this platform and lean way back. I'm not going anywhere. I feel super anchored, super comfortable. And with a bow, I can lean all the way around and possibly be able to take a shot off that side of the tree instead of having to wait for that deer to move either which way. And sometimes, depending on your, how thick your area is that you're shooting, that might only be your shooting lane. So for me, that's a huge option. And it just makes it so much easier because now I'm, I'm comfortable in the tree. I don't have to worry about slipping. And, it, and if I do slip, not that it's gonna feel good, but I'm only gonna swing against that tree. And it makes it a lot easier than falling and hitting the ground. And granted, you know, they got a lot better harness systems now for hunting out of tree stands, which I think everybody should use if you're hunting out of tree stand. It's, you know, it's not that fall that'll kill you, it's that sudden stop at the end. Or if I'm gonna try to, you know, take less rope out of the tether so I can sit up a little more, all you gotta do is you just take one hand, put it higher on your tether, and with the sender, you just take the slack of the rope and you just pull up on it and you can adjust it to wherever you want. So if you're comfortable sitting here, if you wanna stand up a little more, you just adjust it some more and you're, and you're ready to go. And the way this sender works is the rope can only feed through one way. So the moment you let go of that ascender, it's spring-loaded, it'll spring back, catch the rope, and then you're just hanging again. And sometimes, if I'm doing all day sits, I'll actually wear knee pads, and I'll just lean right against the tree sometimes. It kind of all depends on how long you're gonna be sitting and how comfortable you wanna be. Sometimes you can just lean right against it. You know, I hunted with Copez quite a bit last year, and we both ended up getting saddles, and. Or I watched him sleep in his saddle and he watched me sleep in mine. It, it's very comfortable up in the tree and I, I love it and I don't think I'll ever end up going back to a tree stand. So now that I've been hanging here for a while, if I'm going to be done hunting, all I do is each step I did to get up here, I just do that 
the complete opposite. So I'll pull my bow rope out, lower my bow down, take all my camera equipment, put it in my backpack. I'll either lower my backpack down or I'll put my backpack on. It depends kind of how the setup is and if there's a bunch of foliage on the ground, if I'm going to make a bunch of racket lowering my backpack down or not. What I'll end up doing first, I'll take my lumber support off and all you just do is you just pull them elastic bands around your saddle again, loosen it up some, and just pull it back over your head. Unclip it from the carabiner. And there's not really a way it, it folds up. I just kind of just kind of roll it up. And then I'll put that one right back in my sis hauler. And now that that's in there, then I'll go and take the his strap off. And same thing, I don't really do nothing special. I just kind of wrap it up. And shove that right back in on top. Now that I got everything else off and it's just the tether, I'll take my lineman rope back out, wrap that back around the tree, so now I can take the weight off of my tether, unhook that from my bridge, and take the slack back out of my bridge a little so it's not hanging in front of me. And now I can take the tether off without falling out of the tree. And then same thing, nothing special. I just kind of wrap it up in a mess and just shove it right back in there. Then they got these little cinches on here and you just cinch it down and you're good to go. And now I'll just step off the platform, walk down the sticks a little, undo my platform, take that off, hook it back onto the back of my saddle again and then I'll just go down one stick at a time and just unhook my sticks. Well I appreciate you guys watching this video. If it helped you out at all to make any decisions on you know on what saddle hunting is more about I'm gonna leave a link in the description with every item I have by Tethered and Tethered is just what I chose personally. I, I love their customer service. I actually ended up ripping my saddle last year. It was 100% my fault. I shoved a broadhead through one of the straps on accident and I emailed them within a day they responded to me and it was the heart of the season. They understood the fact that it was the heart of the season and I was hunting that weekend and so they overnighted it and made sure it got to me as soon as they could. I'm really looking forward to this fall. We got a bunch of hunting planned and Pat and Justin are actually going to end up in saddles this year as well. Either I'll be filming them or they're going to be filming me but I'm pretty excited for it. I absolutely think it changed the game for me. And it, it made me fall in love with hanging in a tree that much more. If you guys haven't already, like this video, hit that subscribe button. We're going to have a whole bunch of videos coming this fall. we got some huge things planned. I'm really excited to see where this channel grows. If you guys have any questions about those, specifically the Skeletor sticks from Tethered, I'm making another video about that. It should be coming out right after this. But I'll leave a link in the description below of that video as soon as I come out with it. I'll do a little more in-depth review on how I thought those sticks were. But I appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you guys on the next one.